Um, my name is Suzanne Short. I've been working with First Southern National Bank for in, in the Lexington and Jasmine County area for about the past eight years. I started in banking when I was 18 years old, fresh out of high school. I became a banker. I started working as a teller, a CSR, which is a customer service representative, and then it has led into this amazing job with this amazing company of uh, being a branch operations manager today. And so today I get to do things like talk to a lot of, engage in relationships with a lot of local customers, um, a lot of team members that work there at the bank, and so I tell them a lot, because uh, we do uh, in banking, uh, one of my big areas of my job is to solve a lot of problems. Rather that be internal or external, I'm trying to help customers understand sometimes where their money went when they come in, uh, especially on Monday morning, it happens quite often that uh, people come in and their checking account balance or savings account balance is a lot lower than they had thought it would be. And so they always ask us questions, wanna know where their money had been spent, what they had spent it on, and make sure nothing had kind of went wrong with that. So that's kind of what I do in banking every day. Um, if people, uh, if my team members don't show up, of course, I've got to get coverage. And so there's a lot more operational stuff that I do. But a really neat aspect of my job is to just help people um, manage their money, um, provide resources and accounts and services that help them manage their money day to day. Shane is my husband, and Shane... Um, He's, he's been my rock in a lot of ways. He's really been the head of our household and helping me understand to not only live life uh, the way that we would like to, but again, to live the life the way that God expects us to. And so Shane and I have been together for a really long time. I um, am not very old. You don't need to know how old I am, but I'm not very old. <laughs> However, I've been with Shane since I was in high school. And so um, I kind of always knew that uh, Shane and I would be together forever. It's kind of the way it's always been. And so Shane immediately, has he's always been a hard worker. Uh, he, he's not always been self-employed. He is now. And so that has happened over about the course of the past three years. Uh, that uh, he, does, he has a small home repair business, and so he works in construction. Uh, he kind of felt like God was encouraging him to go that direction about three years ago, and God has truly blessed it phenomenally. I became um, what it is that God has said to me about saving money in my life. I, I did not, as a child, as a teenager, uh, growing up, it wasn't uh, in our household. It wasn't there to, it was kind of just buy what you need when you want it. Uh, do whatever you want to do with your money kind of thing. And so um, at about 18 years old, I accepted Christ into my life. And then um, probably, I'd say a few years later is when I started getting into banking. And then that's when I um, at the same time, I accepted Christ, and that's when all of this stuff just started changing. It's like, okay, so you, what do you mean I can't go and just buy whatever I want? What do you? Because when I, you start really seeking God's word and praying about what it is God wants you to do, it really changes that short, that small window and small room of what how you was raised and what you feel like uh, that bubble you've been living in. You just feel like everybody lives that way, and you feel like this is the way life is. And then all of a sudden, you get to know God. And then God's word says a lot different. God's word teaches us a lot of other things. Matthew six twenty four just talks about how you can't serve God and money. And uh, one of my my pastor, not one of my pastors, my pastor a few weeks ago was just teaching from that and teaching about how if you want to know what you're serving, look at your checkbook, look at where you're spending your money every day, and that will show you what you're serving every day. And so that scripture in Matthew six twenty four just teaches us a whole lot to really think about what am I serving. Where does my money go? Does it just go to a lot of eating out? Does it go to a lot of um, shopping uh, for women? That tends to happen. Does it go to a lot of fun stuff? Is it a lot of personal things, personal desires? Is that where my money's being spent? Or is it going to the church? Is it uh, being given to those that are in need? Um, is it going to a savings account so that for future reasons, when those emergencies raise up, that I'm prepared? Uh, the money that I'm spending, am I doing? Am I using that with what I want and what I want to do, or am I doing it the way God wants me to? And it's really hard at that point in my in my point in my life to understand uh, because I felt like I was good with my money. I didn't think I was doing bad. I mean, life was great. I do by no means do I have a lot of money. <laughs> I'm not rich at all. That's why I work every day. And so, especially back then when I was a lot younger. Um, I had to be even more careful with my money. And so um, I think whenever I first start, uh, first started that study, uh, I wasn't saving money. 
I don't think I was. Um, I think my money was driving my lifestyle probably at that time in my life. I think probably I would get my paycheck and then I would live life. I would go to the movies. I would uh, go out and have a good time with my friends. I would go shopping. And then I'd stop and try to pay my bills. And that is the different direction than what Scripture says. You know, Scripture talks about don't let your money, uh, try not to serve, let your money uh, lead and guide you in life. You know, with that Matthew 6, 24, I was talking about you can't serve both God and money. And so um, it started to change me as a person uh, to really um, manage my money, plan it out, and uh, pray about over the money that I have, and, and then start spending it. That was a big wow for me. That was a, a different life change at that age in my life. And so I had a lot to learn. And so it was intimidating at first, but at the end result, and even years later after I've taken that class, it has been extremely helpful. Uh, saving money with the world today. Uh, for me here in Jesmond County, I can speak and say that it seems like, um, from what I see, not a lot of adults are saving. Um, a lot of adults are... Um, are trying to pay off a lot of debt right now. That's what they're focusing on. Uh, they're not focusing on actually saving a lot of money. But the one thing with savings accounts that I do see is that they're really trying to teach their kids to. We open more student savings account right now, I feel like, than anything. Mm -hmm. And so they're, they're really trying to teach their kids how to prepare, how to save money, how to learn from their mistakes. I think that's a lot of, a lot of guilt and a lot of things that's weighed heavy on parents these days today is that I didn't as a person, not myself, but I think as a customer standpoint, you know, that what they're thinking when they come into my office is me as the mom or me as the dad haven't done very well in saving our own money, and we absolutely don't want our kids to take up that habit. Um, people don't keep money in their wallets, and they don't keep money at home because it's easy to get to. People keep money in a savings account so that's not easy to get to because as our natural human tendency, as our natural desire is uh, to just grab money if it's in the drawer and pay for that pizza at home or grab money if you have $20. It's okay to stop by McDonald's or Starbucks and grab that coffee because you have the cash in hand. If it's in your savings account, it's out of your control a little bit. Uh, it's away from you. It reminds you that you are trying to save for something specific in your life. You save for hardship. You save uh, when life happens, medical reasons. You save for when um, uh, somebody loses their job. You save uh, for planning in life. Maybe it's that you want to get married one day and, you wanna, and maybe your parents can't save for that, pay for that wedding, so you want to uh, be careful with that. A lot of people put those things on credit cards, and it really, really hurts them. And so um, those are all your typical things to save for. I mean, if you want to buy a new iPhone or you want to buy a new uh, iPad, you know, things like that, it's okay. You shouldn't feel guilty about wanting those things, but just save for it. You know, those are big expenditures that sometimes you don't just have in your pocket. And get it away from you. Get it out of your hands so that you don't just blow it. Let me tell you, five, if you can just put a dollar, five dollars, slowly increase, it doesn't matter how much money you put in a savings account. The fact is that you teach yourself to save and be, caught, and be intentional about it. Just, just put $5 in there every now and then. Put $10. Put 100 If you can put 1000 do it because one day you'll need it if a car breaks down. Uh, when you're married and in your own house, the washing machine needs to be replaced. There is freedom and comfort in knowing that you have some money set aside for emergencies in your life or for pleasure, for things that you want to do. Uh, and you, you save for that rainy day.